If you guys haven't jumped in yet and gotten yourself or a loved one a hunt a killer box, then you're seriously missing out. There's nothing more satisfying than jumping into one of their boxes and hunting down a killer. So right now, go to huntakiller.com slash scary mysteries and use the code scary and get 20% off of your order. Everyone here loves listening about mysteries, but with Hunt a Killer, you get to actually solve one by sifting through evidence and murder weapons, listening to audio recordings and reading creepy letters. Complete one of these boxes with a friend or significant other and have a nice evening. And if you're solo, then go do it for yourself or chat with the thousands of other Hunt a Killer fans in their spoiler-free community. Go to huntedkiller.com slash scary mysteries and use code scary for 20% off of your order. Strange and Scary Mysteries of the Month, December 2021. Strange and Scary Mysteries of the Month is a compilation of the weird, disturbing, and downright baffling stories currently happening in our world. From UFOs to serial killers, ancient sites, mysterious creatures, and even ghosts. These are the strange and scary mysteries of the month for December 2021. Number 5. Christian K. Of all the things you'd least expect a mother to commit, it would be to cause harm to her offspring. However, it's easy to forget that they too are still human beings, and are capable of acting out on their emotions. A woman, known only by the name Christiane K., has been sentenced to life in prison for committing what the public thought to be the most heinous of all crimes, the details of which are completely terrifying. In September of 2020, the 28-year-old mother from Sullingen, Germany, took a cocktail of drugs and mixed them into the breakfast drinks of her five children named Luca, Timo, Sophie, Leone, and Melina. The eldest of the five was Luca, who was just eight years old, and the youngest was Melina, who just turned one that year. Court details indicated that Christiana allegedly laced their drinks to make them sleepy. After they were knocked out, the mom took the children into the bathroom one by one, and there she drowned or smothered them in the bathtub. The only one spared from this tragedy was her 11-year-old son, Marcel, who was at school when this all occurred. When he arrived home, she took him to a train station and asked him to jump in front of a train with her, but he refused. They got on a train, headed to Dusseldorf, where Christiana supposedly got off. Marcel was left on that train and continued on the trip to Mönchengladbach, where his grandmother lived. Meanwhile, the distraught mother attempted to kill herself by jumping in front of a running train. The suicidal mom, however, was promptly rescued, and upon further investigations into the matter, they found out the shocking truth behind the suicide attempt. As stated in the records, Christiane K. acted out of anger after seeing a photo of her estranged husband with his new girlfriend. The two chatted online where she told the man that he would never see his children again. During the course of her trial, the accused said that she was innocent and that a masked man had allegedly entered their home and killed the children. However, investigators couldn't find any evidence supporting her claim, prompting the jury to dismiss her request for an acquittal. Furthermore, a court-appointed clinical psychiatrist determined that the woman was held criminally responsible for her actions. And so, in November of 2021, a regional court in Wuppertal found the mother guilty of the malicious murders, adding that she had taken advantage of her children's innocence and defenselessness. She was given a life sentence in jail, wherein she would not be eligible for parole for at least 15 years. Number 4. Pig Human Transplant We all need to take care of our bodies, because after all, we only got just one. At least, that notion was what we used to think until now. 
On September 25, 2021, surgeons at NYU's Langone Hospital in New York City successfully performed a transplant between a human being and a pig. The patient was a brain-dead woman who had undergone a two-hour operation at the New York Research Hospital. It was a rather complex procedure to say the least, but with consent from the woman's family, her body was maintained on a ventilator for more than 50 hours after receiving an animal organ, a pig's kidney. Following the surgery, doctors and researchers observed that her urine production and creatinine levels were normal. These levels are key indicators of a well-functioning kidney. And this wasn't just an ordinary pig kidney, however. As indicated in the journal, the organ was genetically altered to remove a certain gene that automatically triggers the body to reject foreign body parts. The reports, surprisingly, also revealed that along with the kidney, the doctors had also transplanted the pig's thymus gland into the patient, the purpose of which was to direct the woman's immune system into responding positively to the rental organ. This kind of procedure, known as xenotransplantation, has actually been around as early as the 2000s, but with no significant results compared to what has recently happened. The next challenge now is for the animal organs to last long for months or even years in the human body. There are millions of people around the world who are waiting in line for donated organs. Sadly though, many of these never come. Could this new medical breakthrough be an answer to the crisis on the supply of life-saving organs? Will we someday see people living with animal organs functioning inside of them acting normally in society. Number 3. 1994 Triple Murder Out of almost 200 countries in the world today, the United States is one of the 14 nations that still retain the right to use the death penalty. In October of 2021, the country took yet another life in the name of justice, and the circumstances leading to this event were rather heartbreaking. On February 12, 1994, a man named Ernest Johnson entered a Casey's convenience store in Columbia, Missouri. He was reportedly under the influence of drugs at the time, and his intent was to rob the place. Three employees, Mary Bratcher, who was 46, 57-year-old Mabel Scruggs, and Fred Jones, who was 58, were at the store during the incident. He ordered Bratcher to open the safe, but got angry when the woman attempted to destroy the key. Using a 25 caliber pistol he had borrowed beforehand, Johnson shot the hostages before ultimately killing them with a claw hammer. He then stored the bodies in the bathroom before fleeing the crime scene. The belongings he discarded in a nearby field helped police to identify him as the perpetrator, and in May of 1995, the Boone County Circuit Court found him guilty and convicted him on three counts of first-degree murder. He was given a death sentence after that. Recently, after almost 30 years on death row, Johnson was finally executed by lethal injection, a move that garnered much controversy. Advocates of the inmates said that the capital punishment was a grave act of injustice. Born in Steele, Missouri, Johnson suffered from fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, which he got from his mother, who had substance abuse problems. Defense lawyers argued that the defendant essentially had an intellectual disability. Despite this, though, the state Supreme Court ruled out the premise of his mental incapacity owing to the fact that he was able to plan, strategize, and attempted to cover up his crime back in 94. The public remained adamant in their calling for Johnson's life to be spared. In 2008, the convict underwent a brain surgery which removed 20% of his brain tissue. The operation wasn't successful though, and it even led to the patient developing epileptic seizures. 
Experts said executing him by lethal injection would result in seizures, which means he could suffer terrible pain in the process, and that this was deemed unconstitutional. A number of notable figures have been calling for Missouri's governor, Mike Parson, to forgo the punishment. One of them was Pope Francis himself, who said that the church's appeal for Johnson's clemency was not based on his intellectual capacity, but for the simple fact that his life was sacred. Aside from the cleric, two members of the U.S. Congress had also appealed to Parson. All appeals, however, were denied. So, on October 5, 2021, Johnson, who was now 61 years old, was finally executed at the Eastern Reception Diagnostic and Correctional Center in Boone Tier, Missouri. He died nine minutes after receiving the injection. Capital punishment always remains a controversial issue. Some would say it is but a fitting retribution to those who deserve it. And yet, others will say we can't forget the sanctity of life, that we are all just humans who have no right to take other people's lives. Number two, murder cases, shocking discovery. We often find ourselves asking, why do some of the best people die early? This could be exactly what the residents in Deerwood, Jacksonville, Florida, had thought of when they heard the tragic news about their neighbor, Saad Kowaf. Kowaf owned a string of convenience stores in Jacksonville called Forest Discount Food Stores. For his employees, he's more than just a nice guy as they looked up to him as someone who gave them employment opportunities. The Deerwood community as well had witnessed the generosity of the small town businessmen. However, they would soon realize that good things don't always last. On the morning of May 17, 1999, the store owner was preparing to go about with his day. But there were two attackers waiting for him in his driveway, and a few minutes later, his wife, Mrs. Kowaf, heard a scream coming from the garage. She rushed to see her husband being beaten and stabbed by a man. Before she could even react, a woman then attacked her, dragged her back inside the house, and tied her up. While all this was going on, the pair of attackers kept on yelling about some money. So Mrs. Kowaf told them about the $30,000 cash that they had stashed inside the house, and eventually the two left after they got their loot. Mr. Kowaf, though, died in the incident, but his wife managed to survive the attack with only minor injuries. She was able to provide investigators with a description of their assailants, and from this information, the police had come up with composite sketches of the suspects. Meanwhile, a DNA sample was recovered from the scene. It was processed, but due to the technological limitations on genetic genealogy at the time, the detectives couldn't figure out the person behind the DNA profile. Despite all the available evidence, the Jacksonville police hadn't made a single arrest in the case, and so with no further leads and information, the case went cold. But a big break came in 2018, when the cold case unit at the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office resubmitted the DNA samples of genetic genealogy. It took some time, but in 2020, the results finally came in. It came as a total shock, not only to the Jacksonville community, but to the police officers themselves who were working on the case. Turns out, one of the culprits was actually a former detective on the force, William Bear. The other one was his wife, from whom he divorced after the 1999 incident. This unexpected development in the case consequently led to the arrest of the ex-JSO detective and his ex-wife in 2020. During the interrogations, Bear exhibited defiant behavior, saying he had no idea about the murder. Meanwhile, his former spouse, Melissa Schaefer, quickly confessed. It was revealed that Bayer took part in an investigation where they were checking out Kawaf, who at the time had been making large cash bank deposits. The victim had since been cleared of this case, but 
The ex-comp apparently grew curious about the money, and so he committed the crime. Both initially pleaded not guilty, but with the evidence stacking up against them, Baron Schaefer eventually admitted to the crime in October of 2021. The court overseeing the trial has yet to pass down the sentencing, but the staff of the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office was more than relieved to finally close the case. Number one, tagged serial killer sentenced. Sometimes the best way to catch a killer is to play with him and beat him at his own game. Khalil Weaver grew up in a family of law enforcement officers. In 2016, the 20-year-old found himself in the same kind of work as a security guard. People describe the New Jersey native as a calm and very helpful person. Outwardly, he was a good-looking young man, clean-cut and well-dressed, but little did everyone know that underneath his facade was a serial killer who committed murders with no remorse. On August 31st, 2016, Weaver set out to meet a woman named Robin West, a sex worker. She was never seen alive again, and the day after they had met up, local police received calls about a fire breaking out in an abandoned house. Inside, they discovered Robin's charred remains. Her body was badly burnt, and it took weeks before they could identify that it was her. A couple of months after the 19-year-old's body was found, another woman, named Joan Brown, also disappeared under mysterious circumstances. Like Wes, the 33-year-old earned her income from being a prostitute, and she reportedly got into Weaver's car on October 22, 2016. On December 5th, Brown's remains were discovered in a different abandoned house. Medical examiners determined her cause of death to be strangulation. On November 22nd, 2016, Weaver then struck again, this time with a different kind of victim. Unlike the previous two, Sarah Butler was a university student. The two met on Tagged, a social media app like Facebook, they planned to go out together, but for some unknown reasons, the girl bailed out. It was only when the killer offered $500 that she agreed to have sex with him. Records have shown that before they met, the would-be victim even jokingly texted him, You're not a serial killer, right? She bade goodbye to her parents. Unknowingly, this would be the last time that they would see their daughter alive. On December 1st, 2016, her body was found abandoned at the Eagle Rock Reservation in West Orange, New Jersey. Weaver's downfall actually began months before the last murder. On November 15th, a woman named Tiffany Taylor had reported to the police about her encounter with Weaver, who left her for dead. Meanwhile, Butler's family and loved ones were determined to catch the killer and exact justice for their beloved, and so they took matters into their own hands. What they did was create a fake profile on Tagged. With the help of the Montclair police, they then came up with a sting operation. On December 6th, the serial killer arrived at the location where he was supposed to meet his date. He was instead met by undercover police who immediately captured him right on the spot wasn't difficult to implicate the accused in the crimes. Authorities found a heap of incriminating evidence from his home on the day that he was arrested. The internet searches that he made didn't help either. Reports said that he looked for how to make homemade poisons and concoctions that you put on a rag and hold to someone's face to make them go to sleep immediately. In December of 2019, Khalil Weaver The now so-called tagged killer was found guilty of numerous charges, including three counts of murder. On October 6, 2021, he was then sentenced to be in prison for 150 years. Had it not been for the ingenuity of Sarah Butler's sisters for them to actually use themselves as bait, the tagged killer could have continued on his killing spree without interruption. So there were the strange and scary mysteries of the month for December 2021. 
Every day we encounter strange and baffling stories that most of us don't know what to make of. These are just a handful, but there's still so many more to uncover. We closed out the year on a strong note, guys. Thank you guys for all the support. Remember to subscribe to our channel and check out our Patreon page if you want some crazier videos that we can't put here on YouTube. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you soon.